This is the G-Man of VAP because my opinion is just that interesting. Hey guys, Josh Fierstein here. You know, the other day I had an atheist tell me that I was an idiot, moronic, and stupid for believing in God. Now, I, Josh, Josh Cannons, I want to stop you right there for a second. I don't like it when anybody with an anecdotal story, it doesn't mean anything to us. All it's there for is to try to elicit an emotional response from us which is a very cheap shot. That he created this world because it took way too much faith to believe in a process like that while he believed in what he called the science of evolution. Well, let's go ahead and let's do this. Dear Mr. Atheist, first of all, let me correct you because evolution is not a science, never has and never will be. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. Stop, Josh, let me stop you again real quick. Um, yes, evolution has been observed. It's observed every day. It's observed in a, a myriad of different ways. The problem is with people like you is that you're asking scientists, biological evolutionary scientists, to produce things that evolution never claims happen. You want, you want a dog to give birth to a cat. You want a sugar glider to give birth to a whale. You want an ape to give birth to a human. That's not what evolution is about. But you don't know that because you don't care about what is the truth. You don't care. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. He said it. He said the theory thing. It's 2014, right? We have, we have the internet. We've got a gazillion books on evolution. We've got a gazillion and five books just about science alone. How many more times do I have to explain this? It's not just a theory. It's not just a theory. Yes, evolution is, in fact, a theory. Just like quantum theory. Just like the theory of gravity. Just like atomic theory and germ theory and all these other theories. Theory in science does not mean guess. Theory in science is a collection of information and data and evidence and laws that explain a phenomenon. Gravity is a theory, just a theory, because gravity works different under different circumstances, like at the quantum level and on the planetary level. So there is no one law of gravity that explains things. So. If you have your qualms of evolution, fine. If you have evidence against evolution, even better. But do not resort to this fucking asinine bullshit backwards, head up your ass, stupid idea. That just because it's called the theory of evolution, the whole thing crumbles down. You don't know what a theory is because you do not care about the truth. You do not care about what is accurate. You do not care about science. One man's theory. Stop, stop, stop again. Stop, Josh. It's not one man's theory. Sure, Charles Darwin got the ball moving when it came to understanding how species diversification works when it came to natural selection. And you know what? If he was wrong, we would have abandoned the idea. We would have abandoned it like so many scientific ideas that we've abandoned over the years, like, you know, us being the center of the universe. He even had his own little reservations about it, like the quote mind quote that is so often used by the intelligent design crowd, where he says, you know, he, that he's worried about there being no transitional thoughts. However, in the, 200, the 250 years since his idea has been vindicated. Now it's the entire body of science's theory about natural selection and, and adaptation. Now let me show you how much faith it really takes to believe in evolution. You want me to believe that in some accidental cosmic bank that out of that was created one cell and from that one cell that all life springs, every plant, every animal, every single human being, and that somewhere along the way over years and years we mysteriously and magically all develop different wills and we all develop different characteristics and traits all because we willed it in our, I mean, you really think that everything came from one single cell? How much faith does that take? Josh, Josh, I really hope you're paying attention, taking notes and everything like a good student because I'm trying to help you. I'm really, I'm really trying to help you for the future because I want you to learn because you haven't learned anything your entire life. You don't know 
at all what you're talking about. At all. You don't know at all what you're talking about. And I, I sympathize with you. I was an anti-science person just like you a couple years ago. And then I started actually looking into the things that I was told were so backwards and evil and unscientific. The Big Bang was not an accident. It was a singularity that existed, that expanded space-time. More importantly, after the Big Bang, there was a lot of time in before when life developed. A lot of time in between when life developed. Evolution has nothing to do with the Big Bang. But that's like saying, oh, you know, cells divide, why can't rocks divide? Cellular division is fake. Evolution happens once life is already here. The Big Bang has nothing to do with how evolution works. Evolution has nothing to do with the way the Big Bang works, okay? Now, I realize that you say that evolution is in science. No, I, I don't say that because I would never say something so grammatically awkward. And yet, if we go back to science, the one thing that science demands, if you maybe you've heard of the, something called the law of thermodynamics, which means that chaos can never produce order. He said it. He said it. He's. You, you, you hear this fucking guy? He used a the thermodynamics argument again. I just explained this a video ago. Thermodynamics don't influence evolution the way you the way you have been taught. Okay, by Kent Hoven, the way you the way you think they do. Okay, best of all, you didn't even use a specific law of thermodynamics. You just said thermodynamics and just walked away. You are the biggest fool. We get as biological organisms, which we are, we get nutrients from vegetables, which get put into animals, which we then ingest, or maybe we just get the vegetables right directly. And they all get their energy from the sun. Look at the world that we live in. The sun goes up, the moon comes out, we travel around the sun, we have years, we have days, we have seasons, the tide comes in and out, everything works like a clock. It has order. And yet, you cannot argue that a world that has order came out of an accident because it defies the very logic and laws of science. Did he just say that the tides go in, the times go out? I see you turning into Bill O'Reilly now. Um, I, I don't really know what he's getting at with this. You started out talking about evolution. Now you're jumping to something completely different. Pick your category and stay in it, you baboon backwards butthead. Cosmology is an entirely different field of science and you wanted to go out and talk about evolution and now you've jumped to something completely different i know by the way you talk that it's hard for you to keep your mind on one thing i know by the hasty hastily way you threw this video together in your car on your smartphone that you do not know what you're talking about all this video is is a collection of regurgitated crap you've heard from other people read on the internet, seen, shared on Facebook, and things that were spewed up by Michael Behe, Lee Strobel, Ken Tovin, Eric Hovind, and Ray Comfort. I know you yourself have never actually looked into what you're talking about, and that is extremely evident by the scatterbrained no nonsensical way in which you are arguing against evolution. You dipshit. You see, you think it takes a lot of, of faith for me to believe in a God that created this world, a God that created order, and yet, what if I were to tell you? I'm gonna skip this whole part where he, he uses this, it's, it's essentially Paley's pocket watch argument that's been updated to include a tornado because tornadoes are cool! And it, instead of a pocket watch, it's creating a plane. No, of course not. I would think that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous because that's not how planes are made. We have never and will never find any indication that that's how a plane could be made, is made, or has ever been made. Human beings are biological organisms. Apes are biological organisms. All 
animals are biological organisms and there are certain ways in which they work they come from other organisms so no your argument is stupid but I mean how much faith would it really take to believe something as idiotic as that and yet that's exactly what science believes hold up this part is super fascinating because he says that that's what science believes and yet he's been using science to prove his point so now science is just proving science what, 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 is, what is he talking about I don't know what he's talking about I know I know Josh here sure as hell doesn't know what he's talking about that's been demonstrated since the beginning of this video he is Josh my friend you've dug your own grave okay and I'm gonna try to hand you a ladder so you can pull yourself out of that grave before you bury yourself in more freaking illogical backwards mindless reasonless bullshit science believes that in this accident came this perfectly working earth with human life and with people and animals and plants and and seasons and days and hours and rotates I mean, the atmosphere everything in earth was created perfectly and i'm telling you that could never happen through an accident it wasn't an accident we have explanations for these kinds of things and the way things are developed they're complicated all right they're detailed uncovering the workings of the natural universe and the natural world were not easy and still aren't easy but we have explanations they're not an accident is a is a tornado an accident is rain an accident is an earthquake an accident no none of these things are accidents they're causation they're laws of nature they're things that happen because other things affect them the natural world has a way in which it works and we are part of that so is the rest of the universe always has been it had to be by intelligent design there it is folks he says it himself it had to be by intelligent design this whole video has been a game piece to propel the id movement and try to wedge it back into our schools try to wedge it into the scientific community who really has to have a lot of faith today to believe in their theory not me because my theories are the theories of science my theories are the models with predictive power that are made up of laws and evidences and the workings of the universe you have not posited anything against them and for your point I'm going to skip all this anecdotal stuff because it's not important. He goes on and he talks about how Yellowstone and he, it's a creation and everything like that. You're using the word creation and then, and then plugging in creator. Painting needs a painter. Building needs a builder. Creation needs a creator. Well, that's great. Evolution is still true. The Big Bang is still true. You're still an idiot. Well, the word universe, you believe in a Big Bang, but... When I look at the word universe, it means una, which is one or singular. That's Latin, una, verse. Verse means a spoken statement. So universe is one single spoken statement. Uni, yes, in Latin means singular. But verse in Latin means to turn, which is more accurate to what universe actually means. Universe means, it essentially means to turn. Talking about how, well, at least galaxies turn. Your little word game here, just like you do with theory, is completely inaccurate. And also, I'm going to skip the rest of this video. It's just him proselytizing and him begging for people to share his videos and like him on Facebook so he can get more popularity. But he also demonstrates that, once again, this is just a vehicle for him trying to promote intelligent design and creation because he's too scared to accept new ideas throughout history and throughout your own life i'm not just talking to josh here i'm talking to everyone throughout our lives we find out new things we think certain ways about the universe about the world about our lives and the people around us when i was a kid i was confused when i found out that my mom had a mom that my mom had aunts and uncles too that my mom had cousins and that her aunts and uncles had parents and cousins that her mom had parents and cousins and sometimes they were the same parents that confused me because i thought i was the only one who 
had a family structure like that. I knew my friends did, but I didn't think anybody else in my family had a structure like that. But I learned things. When I was a kid, when you were kids, we all thought different things that were ridiculous about the universe, the world, and the people around us. Throughout history, we have believed ridiculous things about the universe, the world, and the people around us. But we learned and we modified what we thought. We got smarter, we learned. We increased the collective knowledge that we all shared. And that's what science aims to do. Science, on its best day, is a process in which we can try to eliminate biases and false information. And we falsify the things that aren't correct and we disprove them. And hopefully, by the end of the day, by the end of the generation, what we have is the best explanatory model to explain the world, the people around us, and the universe. Will it change? Yes, most definitely. But whenever science changes, it gets more accurate. We get better at doing what we do. That's what evolution is. It was, and is, it is, currently, the best explanatory model to explain a field of biological phenomenon. It has nothing to do, it never was, an attempt to disprove God. I do not know where this ridiculous notion started, this ridiculous fear-mongering that Josh Fierstein and his ilk, I don't know where it came from. I don't. I simply don't. But I know it's here, and it's detrimental to us going forward as a species understanding the world, the universe, and the people around us. Intelligent design and creation, both of them are not science because creation outright goes against everything we know from cosmology, astronomy, paleontology, geology, physics, and biology, as well as a host of other scientific fields. ID is not much better because, if anything, the only thing ID adds to it is, well, at the beginning something created us. Sure. And then from that point on, we have all these laws and all these theories and all these naturalistic explanations that explain how the worlds work. Worlds, world works, universe. So intelligent design is not science. Creation sure is hell in science. And the fact that you don't even know about the things that you're trying to bash Josh Feuerstein and all of your ilk is really frustrating because we can't have a good dialogue if you don't even know what you're talking about. If most of the time where we are having a discourse is me or other science-minded people like myself having to explain to you from the ground up how these things work. When we, people like me say, read a book, we want you to know about what you're talking about. It's easy for us and it's going to be a lot easier for you. I started studying science. That's how I learned. You would do well to to learn.